All right. Today we are joined by former NFL linebacker Lofa Tupu. Lofa, thanks for joining us. Yeah, appreciate you having me, fellas. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll get we'll get right into it. So first thing I want to talk to you about, uh, which I'm sure is something not a lot of people know about you when I was doing some research. Um, so you played quarterback in high school. So I just wanted to I just wanted to ask you, what was your experience like playing quarterback? Of course, you know, we train a lot of quarterbacks, we work with a lot of quarterbacks. So I was just wondering what your experience was like at the position. Yeah, you know, I tried to play quarterback. I don't know how good I was at it, um, <laughs> which is why, you know, I ended up playing linebacker in college. But um, interesting enough, my only three Division I uh, scholarship offers were to play quarterback. Um, I had a good arm, strong arm, accurate, but I didn't see many, uh, you know, 5'11", six-foot quarterbacks in the NFL. So I opted for defense going to, uh, you know, to college. But it was fun. I learned a lot more about the game, um, you know, and it helped me out defensively in terms of knowing what areas or zones um, the quarterback is trying to target when he's going through his progressions. So as a middle linebacker, I believe I attribute a lot of my interceptions because of knowing what the quarterback has to do or what he wants to do with the ball, given, given the defense. Right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, so how was your transition from Maine to USC? I feel like, you know, it's literally the opposite sides of the countries, obviously. It gets cold up there in Maine, but in USC, it's probably warm a lot. So how was, like, the adjustment from going to Maine to USC? Yeah, I mean, from a climate right there, you, you hit it on the head. It was, it was a little nicer, <laughs> uh, but I grew up in Massachusetts, so I, I like the cold. You know, I like playing in the cold. I always had my best games in the cold. Uh, cause you know, I, I sweat a lot. So when I was going out there, it was like an adjustment, literally trying to, you know, get, get, um, acclimated to the weather. Um, in terms of competition, it's, um, there's phenomenal athletes, division one, two, three, all across the board. You'll see guys make it to the next level to the NFL. Um, but what I noticed the biggest difference was all of the offensive linemen and defensive linemen were huge and they were athletic. I mean, it was um, that was what stood out the most that you know we're in one double A you'd face maybe one or two colleges in, in in the playoffs that had a couple three hundred pounders. When I got to SC, everybody was over three hundred pounds and they could all move. You know, like they were getting they were firing off the ball. They're all great athletes in space. So that was the biggest uh, difference I saw in terms of uh, you know um, skill. Yeah, definitely. You know the higher level you get, you know, the harder competition you have to face. So definitely makes sense. For sure. So what was it like winning a um, Natty championship your senior year? Definitely a good way to go out. Yeah, um, was incredibly blessed to be on some talented teams there at USC. As everybody knows, you know, Reggie Bush, Matt Liner, um, even the year I was redshirting Carson Palmer, I got to play with three Heisman Trophy winners. And, um, you know, I don't know how many people can say they do that, other than my teammates that were there that can say they did that. So that's special. But, um, you know, we worked hard on defense, and we were always up there in, in terms of top of the rankings. And um, it was just an incredible journey. In the two years, uh, we went 25-1. and one, And the, the one loss was in triple overtime uh, at Cal to a guy by the name of Aaron Rodgers. So I know you guys like quarterbacks. This is a pretty good one right there. Um, but, you know, uh, I look back and, you know, just how much fun it was, you know, everyone that stands out. Everybody sees that. But what they don't understand is the sacrifice, uh, the morning workouts, the, the grueling practices. I mean, you think, uh, try, to, try to stop Lendale White from running the ball and then try to cover Reggie Bush, you know, <laughs> when he's running routes. So, um, but iron sharpens iron, and I believe that's what helped me, you know, perfect my craft and get better, you know, all my weaknesses. It helped me really shore up my game and um, become well-rounded. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you just talked a little bit about the sacrifice and things like that. Was there any, was there any guys early on in your career that really kind of took you under their wing and kind of mentored you, and then yourself later on in your career? Did you find yourself kind of being that mentor for younger guys? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was always blessed with a lot of incredibly strong leaders that um, I got to learn from. 
Um, even dating back to Maine, uh, several of my guys, uh, Malik Nichols, you know, a senior linebacker, Stephen Cooper, a guy who played in the league for uh, eight years with the Chargers. He was a beast. Um, we had no shortage of leaders there as well as SC. Uh, you got guys like Carson, Troy Polamalu, um, the year I was sitting out, I got to study everything he did. Mm -hmm. And in terms of well-rounded game, there was nothing that guy couldn't do. Coverage, uh, blitzing, run fits, you know, so watching him and the way he broke down the game was incredible. I mean, we were talking about a Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever play at safety. Um, so, uh, and then in the linebacker room, um, you know, guys like Mike Pollard, Champ Simmons, um, you know, Matt Grudegood, there were several guys that helped teach me the game. And um, because coming from the East Coast, you know, um, it's, it's not just, you know, learning your surroundings and now you're in LA, but it's also, um, you know, how they go about business. And because they had started to turn that program around and, um, and had just went to an Orange Bowl, 11 and two, Carson and Troy's last year. So um, it was it was a tight tight team. Most championship teams, that's what you hear. Um, that yeah. it, was, it was family, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, now after you obviously you won your national championship your senior year. After that, um, you know, you you became a second round pick of the Seahawks. So, what was your initial thoughts that the, you know the Seahawks believed in you, and um, you know they wanted they wanted to pick you up in the second round. So, what was what was your reaction to that? Yeah, I, I left. Um, I left after my junior year um, against everybody's advice. They, <laughs> there was, you know, all the draft pundits and experts were saying, "Oh, this guy's making a mistake. He's he's too small, too slow. He's not going to get drafted until the fifth or sixth round." Um, but I, you know, I, I left because I had the confidence that I, I could play at the next level, and I knew I could. And um, when I realized Seattle really wanted me, was they traded up two fourth round picks to swap out a second rounder with, uh, I think it was Carolina and, um, and, and get me at the 45th spot. And, um, you know, that meant the world to me that, that they, you know, they cared enough and they went up and got me as opposed to, I was hearing a lot of other teams saying, Oh, well, if he falls to us in the, in the third round, you know, we'll definitely take him then. So, um, you know, that's why everything I did, man, was just to try to, you know, repay them for, for taking that leap of faith and, uh, and taking a kid that was deemed too small and too slow. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Now, what was it, what was it, what was it like having the opportunity to play with Matt Hasselbeck? Now he was one of my favorite players growing up. So um, of course your dad and Matt's, Matt Hasselbeck's dad played together. So what was that? That must've been pretty cool for you to um, be able to have the opportunity to play with him, especially from both of you being from Mass and everything too. Yeah, yeah, the whole Hasselbeck family, you know, tremendous athletes, and they were great friends of ours growing up. I competed against the, the youngest, Nathaniel, actually, um, all growing up, and he was a phenomenal athlete. Um, but getting to play with Matt and, um, you know, just the, the Tri-Town where we, we grew up, Tri-Town, Massachusetts, man, there's a lot of, you know, pride and respect that, that you know, goes from, for anybody, from where they're, you know, they, they love their hometown. And so, um, you know, we, you know, we take that very seriously. And that was awesome to, to you know, have two captains from the Tri-Town on an NFL roster. I don't, you know, has that happened anywhere else where, you know, two guys from the same hometown or neighboring towns went on to be captains? I don't know. We, we have to look that stat up. But um, huh. you always, you heard a lot about, you know, Haas, you know, and then what he did at BC and, and then going on to the NFL. And you were always proud. Um, to be from the same area. So it meant, meant the world to me to actually to get to go to battle with, with you know, my guy has. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what, so, you know, you've obviously you played for the Seahawks for five seasons. So what was your experience like being a part of that organization? Oh, it's an incredible organization. Um, I think the thing they don't get enough credit for is all the charitable and the, you know, the work in the community that they do. And um, that's what stands out the most. And, and that was, you know, from the top, from, from Paul Allen, the late, great Paul Allen. Um, he did so much for, you know, saving football in Seattle by keeping the team here. But um, he did so much more than that, that, you know, I would like everybody to, you know, remember uh, when they talk about the great Paul Allen is um, how much he meant to this, you know, not just Seattle, the city, but, you know, the state of Washington and, and everywhere where he, you know, he left his, his fingerprint in terms of hard work, you know, and uh, dedication to, to community. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So now what do you, what do you love, you know, what do you love most about playing the sport? Was it just the kind of the bonds you make with the guys, just um, the feeling of being in games? What did, what did you love the most? I love competition the most. And, um, you know, just like I said, I was never blessed to be the biggest, strongest, fastest. So you got to be one of the toughest or, you know, you got to have, you know, a lot of confidence going into, into battle, knowing that, you know, you're lacking in many areas. And I think that, you know, the test of your will and how far you're willing to go. And it was what I love the most um, when I talk about competition, knowing that everything on paper says I shouldn't win this match, this one-on-one -on -one against this guy. But we're going to see the one thing you can't test, you can't judge, is, you know, heart. We're going to see who has it here and, um, and who's willing to go the farthest, you know, to, to win this battle, to win this game. And uh, on top of that, um, the other things that drove me was um, being part of something bigger than yourself, being part of a team, I think. And that's why you always hear when guys walk away from the game, the thing they miss the most, you know, of course, game day, you're going to miss that. But they miss the locker room. They miss all the laughs all the camaraderie and, you know, going through all those hard times and those struggles together, uh, you know, as one. And so uh, the two things I would say, competition and just finding out what you're really made of. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, my teammates, man, those are my brothers. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah, so obviously with Pete Carroll, you know, being one of the greater coaches we've seen recently, what do you think like makes him the coach he is or are there any like outstanding qualities both as a coach and a person that you see in Pete? I think Pete's best quality is his ability to motivate from a positive uh, perspective. You know, doesn't matter what happens. And I'm been telling you, man, whether I was in college or in the NFL with him, uh, didn't matter what happened you know, turn the ball over four or five times, you know, he always believed, as we all did, that we were going to change the game that next play with the next opportunity we got. And that belief is what builds championship teams. Um, you know, I know we, with Mike Holmgren winning the division several times and then also Pete, you know, winning the division and then watching him go on to have success. His teams, they believe that they're going to get the job done, that they're going to win. And, um, and that's what separates the good from the great teams coming down the stretch um, as you see, we'll see in this playoff push for a lot of teams, um, the ones that don't beat themselves and, and the ones that just believe that they're going to win. I don't know how many close games you got to see from, hopefully it doesn't happen tonight, right? Because <laughs> uh, they play Monday night football. But, um, you know, it seems like prime time. They're always coming down to the last series. But the majority of the time, Pete's teams are pulling it off. I mean, it helps when you got, you know, guys like Russell Wilson, K.J. Wright, and Bobby Wagner. But, um but that message and that belief has to be there or else it doesn't matter. And that's, and that's where I feel like him and, him and Russell Wilson are such a good combo. I feel like Russell Wilson kind of share those same kind of beliefs. Like he's, he always believes, he always believes himself being an undersized quarterback his whole life. And that's why I just feel like I love that combo um, between the two. Absolutely. It's, it's translated right down from, you know, the coach to the players and it resonates throughout. And um, yeah, I, I, I haven't been around too many leaders like, like Russ, just that, that belief. Like I'm talking, you look at the, the Green Bay NFC Championship game where he threw four picks. I mean, he had one of the worst games of his life. And in overtime, he made just enough plays to come back and, and you know, force overtime. And as soon as he saw his shot, he took it. And he completed a 60-yard bomb to Jermaine Curse, And, you know, the rest is history. And that's just – and when you do it over and over – you know, it becomes routine. And, and that's where that confidence is built uh, on top of how hard they prepare week in and week out. But that confidence starts to build. And that's a scary thing, especially with what towards the end of the seasons and years been last decade, Pete's teams have always played their best end of November going into December and then right into the playoffs. So um, it's going to be exciting to watch. Is there any, is there anything else about Russell Wilson that, you know, is just, completely different than anything else you've seen in any other, any other quarterbacks that you've been around? I mean, I've seen him play through so many injuries. You know, I've seen Hass play through injuries. Um, it, it's just, it's, you can't phase the guy. I mean, and if, if that Green Bay game isn't enough, um, I've seen him, 
take some vicious hits. The one where he had a partially, he had a grade two strain. And um, I'm telling you, as a guy who tore both packs <laughs> playing football, um, another, you go to grade three, grade, grade four is completely off the bone. So, uh, which I did. And, you know, I don't know how he was throwing the ball the way he was. And, um, and then, and I believe that was 2015, my, my first year on the staff coaching. And he had a streak of, it was like 28 touchdowns and two mm -hmm. or three interceptions. You're, yeah, you remember that streak? Yeah. It was incredible. And he also had a grade two uh, MCL sprain on his left knee, on his, on his plant knee. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. The guy never ceases to amaze me. And uh, I'm glad he's finally getting the respect that he deserves. Um, you know, everyone's always, always appreciated his game. But I think now, as he doesn't have a – a top rushing game as he doesn't have a top defense anymore. I think they're starting to understand what he really means to this team mm -hmm. you know, and what he's meant all along, but it's just tough when you got Marshawn Lynch and the Legion of boom and that defense for the first five or six years. Right. You know, it's, it's like, I mean, that team was incredible. Um, so, so now they're relying on a little more and, and he's, he's showing up. Right. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I definitely had to ask a couple questions about him he's my he's my favorite quarterback I I wore number three for him and everything so awesome uh, <laughs> yeah so moving more into a advice kind of section if you could give any piece of advice to your younger self what would it be uh, that's a good one um, don't be so hard on yourself <laughs> Well, I don't know. That kind of led to my, my work ethic and why, you know, I be, be, can't be, be more open-minded. I'll say that. <laughs> um, and not that I had an unwillingness to, to, to learn more. Um, Cause I, you know, I was, uh, I was in the film. I was a film junkie, man. I was in there all the time, but I, I'm talking in terms of technique wise. Um, there were some areas that I would have liked to have, you know, gotten a little better at and, um, you know, just ask more questions. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, and not just from my defensive coaches, but offensive guys. I mean, you have all these guys that you're trying to beat. And I know, you know, when you go into practice, they don't want to give you the tips, but um, you they're there for advice too. And they're your brothers. They're going to help you beat the competition when you go to game day. So I, I, I wish I asked, you know, offensive line more about hand placements in terms of pass rushing. I wish... I asked quarterbacks, um, you know, because yeah, I had to run cover two, that middle paint on, you know, how likely are you to take a shot if you know the guy's in position? Because then I could have throttled down and made a, made a couple plays on the, the shorter routes. So my advice would be just never stop asking, never stop, you know, learning and, and trying to get better. Um, I feel like I always did, but there's a lot of times where, you know, you're afraid of being wrong, right? Or looking stupid if you ask a question. It's like, there's no such thing as a stupid question, but if you sit there with without the answers, you're going to look stupid <laughs> on some situations in game day. So um, that's, you know, just always be, always be inquisitive and, and keep asking questions. Keep, keep getting better. Right. Yeah. I, I really like that answer. I know I'm a, I'm a college coach now. So that's something I noticed with a lot of guys, especially the younger guys, they don't ask enough questions and, Right. When, you know, while we're in meetings, while we're going over stuff, then we go on to the field and there, that's when they're lost. <laughs> and then they want to ask the questions like, no, nah, man, like uh, if you had the answer, you wouldn't have thrown that ball. You know, just, I, no, nah, I know I've been there, you know, from both sides, even as a right. coach, but also, uh, you know, as a player too, because I mean, that's, you know, you don't want to look down in front of your peers, but you know, look at that. Like, yo, who cares? I want to get better. Um, and the best, that's what they do. So yeah, for sure. Yep, yep. Yeah, definitely utilizing your resources, you know, as much as you can is definitely a huge thing when it comes to improving as an athlete. No doubt. So do you have any recruiting tips, like especially now with like, you know, a lot of players' seasons aren't even going on, and if they are, it's like delayed in some way. So oh, for the kid? What did you say? For the kid? Any recruiting tips for the kid? Yeah, for like high schoolers and like, yeah, and I, I, this comes from personal experience is, you know, you better have a plan. Um, it's unfortunate that you're not going to get to play 
your senior season. That's the case out here for a lot of these kids. So, um, and this personally, you know, having very few options coming out of high school, um, you know, I started to develop a plan and I said, hey, look, I don't care if I have to go to junior college. Um, you know, prep school was, you know, couldn't afford it. So I, and that wasn't an option. So it was really coming down to, to junior college um, to get more exposure. So I was gonna travel out to uh, California or Texas because that's where the powerhouses are. It's not to say you have to do that, but uh, a lot of my friends that play with me at SC, they went to junior college and they had their pick I mean, they ended up going to, to SC and winning national championships. So they had their pick of any school they wanted to go to. But um, definitely send your tape out. There's so many ways, like Huddle and, all, you know, YouTube. Um, I saw a kid in basketball put his highlights on Twitter and got an offer from, uh, from a school. So there's so many avenues these days. Back then, we had the, the VHS tape. You guys are too young to know what that is. <laughs> it's not even a... Not even a CD or, you know, it was a tape and they don't even sell those anymore. But uh, I had I had to record all mine and then send them out to to, uh, to schools. And I, you're lucky if that gets in front of, you know, someone that makes decisions. But regardless, just have a plan. And so my plan, after I looked at all the schools, the three schools that wanted me to play quarterback, Maine that wanted me to play linebacker, and then, um, you know, Juco. I felt that Maine was the best option for me because they had some great linebackers and they had a knack for developing linebackers, which is really why I believe I was able to even get a look at Southern California. And, um, you know, so um, just like I said, have a plan. And if you're one of the kids that's blessed to have all these options, look at the quarter, look at the coach. Like if we're talking quarterbacks, you know, take a look at, how that system has developed quarterbacks or if it's O-linemen or, if, you know, and, and that's going to, you know, have they sent guys on to the next level or have they at least, you know, gotten them much better from start to finish? Those are the things that, you know, I was taking into consideration back 20 plus years ago. And, um, you know, so, you know, and I just wish I had more of an avenue to get my film out uh, as these kids do now. So my, my main advice, um, I know it was long winded, but have a plan. And, and you know, and because uh, once you have a plan, you know how to go about your business. But if you're just like, oh, I don't know, I'll go here and see what happens. You're not giving yourself the best chance to succeed. Right. 100%. 100%. Totally agree with that. So what are, what are some things that you, you believe that athletes, especially football players, should focus on for development? Mm -hmm. Whether that's you know during the during their high school years um, and from high school to college as well, uh, gaining weight is the most overrated <laughs> advice. You know, I was told I was too small. You know, I was like maybe two oh five, two ten my senior year. I was told I was too small, and so put on a bunch of weight. You know, to and it wasn't wasn't great weight. I mean. I started moving slower. I started, you know, it was just like, man, what did I do to myself? I set myself backwards. So um, stay fast, stay fast as long as you can. And, um, and it doesn't matter because, um, you know, force is, you know, that's all that matters. How much force you put into the ground, how much force you put into the opposing player. And that comes through speed, fellas. So uh, if you get bigger, you're just going to be slower if you're not moving that weight properly. Um, so development wise, yeah, I wish, I wish I got with a track coach and, and develop proper mechanics of running. And, you know, that's, that's probably wild for kids to hear like, well, you played in the NFL six years, like you should know how to run at least. I didn't, I still don't. I mean, <laughs> I'm running a little better than I used to, but you know, and I'm talking about, you know, just the proper, all of it. Um, and, uh, so that, that alone will keep you from a lot of injuries in terms of the knees, the ankles, lower back. If you have a proper foundation there and, and you're not going to waste as much energy when you're out there because you're doing it efficiently. So um, I wish I stayed fast and got with the track coach, didn't put on that weight and got with the track coach uh, to just learn proper mechanics that when you get tired, 
you know, in the fourth quarter, if you have great technique, you know, you can focus and just be in the moment on the play. You're not sitting there keeled over, all tired, and with your form going going to shit, so to speak. Um, so, um, yeah, technique always wins. So, yeah, just those, those are the – in terms of development phase, because you have time to put on weight and do all the other things that you need to do. You're going to. You're still growing. I wish someone told me that back in the day, but <laughs> – Right. But I'm here to tell you now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that too. And just definitely the putting on weight part. I've, I've noticed a lot of, a lot of, a lot of guys just think that that's all they have to do. And they forget about, like you said, they forget about the speed part and the fundamental areas. Yeah. And you, look nice, you look nice and big and the running back is going to run right by you. <laughs> right. Right. And this t- too, too many times they'll focus on how much they can bench and how much weight they're throwing up. Obviously, that's important, the weight room stuff, but you got to have the total package. Yeah. I mean, we all get – it's the ego, right? We get caught up like, oh, I bench 300, I bench 400. Like, if you're not moving – and this is like something I didn't learn until later in life. It's like you, it's better to be moving 225 for a lot of reps and fast than it is to be, rent, you know, moving 400 pounds one time and gassed like so um you know it's, it's, it's all the things that sometimes you got to learn the hard way but you know if you listen to me don't learn the hard way <laughs> you know just stay fast stay stay mobile stay efficient you know and you know all the moves you do because um that's what's gonna that's what's gonna lead to longevity in this game and as you mentioned you know i had all those injuries because i didn't have i didn't have a great foundation or base uh, i was just doing you know what I thought was right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, you've been around the Seahawks for a little. You were obviously you played there and then um, went on to coach there. So I was one. I was just curious, you know, where do you see the Seahawks season ending up this year? Where do you see this team going? It looks like they're showing up that defense. You know, we made some trades and, you know, getting that pass rush uh, with Carlos Dunlap, who's been an incredible addition. Jamal Adams is healthy again. And, I mean, that guy – is a monster out there. I think he's only been healthy for like three and a half games. And he's got five and a half sacks from the safety position. Um, and the secondary, Shaq Griffin's coming back tonight. So excited about that. And on offense, you know, Russ is getting some help in that backfield with, with Carson and Hyde being healthy again. Um, so now, you know, play action is going to actually hold the linebackers and the second level defenders. They have to respect it. Whereas in the first, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a month, that, that, that tough month stretch we had where we had to count on the rookies. We did a great job. They're just – if I'm a veteran linebacker, I'm not biting on that play action. You better prove to me that you can run the ball before I can get up there. And um, and so that's why the lanes got a little, little tighter and maybe some of those interceptions happened. But, you know, they're getting healthy at the right time of the year, and they've been playing great ball. Um, big win last week against Arizona. So I see them – I see all three teams out of the four, us – Arizona and the Rams making the postseason because the expanded field. But um, if they can somehow get up to that first seed, it's going to be tough with the Saints right now, but they're only a game behind them. If they can somehow get up to that first seed. If they get home field, I feel like that's just, you know, even without the fans, it's it's the their, their streak of, of winning there uh, over the years, over the last decade has been incredible. And, you know, undefeated right now at home, so. Yeah, if they, if they get home field, I can see it going to the Super Bowl, the road, the road going through here. Right. Yeah, let's hope, let's hope for that for sure. <laughs> yeah, and as you were mentioning earlier with a run game, I feel like with DJ Dallas, he was more of like a pass catching back. He didn't really have, you know, that dominant like presence up the middle. So like having yeah. him back tonight is huge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, I think DJ is going to be great. He's just, he's young. Um, you look at a lot of running back. There's not a lot that that come in and they just set the league on fire. There's a, there's a couple, you know, like a Dalvin Cook and um, even Derrick Henry. James Robinson. Even James Robinson, yeah, right. But uh, even uh, King Henry. Now, he was on the bench most of the year with uh, Demarco Murray. You know, carrying the, the the bulk of the the majority of the load there. So, um, running back's a tough position to come in and, and, and ball out at. Man, they all it. Every position is, but you see a lot of big growth from year one to year two with those guys. Look at Alex Collins, who we just got back. 
Um, he was cut after a year and a half with us, and then he went to Baltimore, and then yep. nine games he rushed for like 980 yards. So, yeah, I mean, it's just you never know, right, uh, when it's finally going to click. And um, so impressed with what DJ's done. Travis Homer's been a great addition too, both both kids from Miami. And um, But, we, you know, hopefully we can rely on, on Carson and, uh, and Hyde towards the end of the season because that's been the biggest difference in the playoffs. Carson hasn't been there to play, and right. we got Hyde. So, which I was hoping they were going to bring back Beast Mode. Me too. Uh, I mean, everybody wanted that. So, <laughs> you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe in the playoffs. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They, they're saving them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then looking more of a business side of things, what was the um, inspiration behind you starting your CBD brand? Oh yeah, Zone in CBD. Um, Honestly, fellas, I had heard a lot and I had looked for a lot of, you know, natural solutions when I left the game. 10 surgeries, 15 plus concussions. Uh, that's a lot to go through mentally, physically, and emotionally uh, in a lifetime, never mind in the span of eight years. Uh, and, you know, I kept hearing more and more about CBD. And um, just as I, as I started, you know, researching, just reading about it, articles and papers, and then um, even picking up books. Uh, I started my journey and I started journaling. I bought a bunch of products and started, you know, to see, I go, is this real? Everything I'm hearing from an inflammation standpoint, from a neuroprotectant, uh, meaning it can help you cognitively get back and maybe even exceed where you were, you know, before all the concussions. And um, I'm here to say, that, I mean, the reason I started this was because it brought me back to, you know, my best self. Um, in every facet of life, whether it's family life, business life, um, you know, everything, I just feel more in the moment and not, not worrying about anything, just reacting in, which is, you know, why we call it zone in like, like the zone, um, you know, when any, uh, my best play, my best performance thinking about, you know, in, uh, against Philly back in the day, which is ironic, you know, we're playing Philly tonight. It's, um, just totally immersed in the, in the moment and where you can't miss. And that's where we got the name is, you know, uh, zone in. So it's been helping a lot of people. Um, we're coming out with a new product uh, pretty, pretty soon here, probably, hopefully by Christmas, but it might, might be just after new year, which is an energy mix. And um, just to help you get more, more focused and zoned in, so to speak. So um, hopefully you can replace a lot of those sugary drinks that my kids are addicted to. And <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and other stuff, right? But um, yeah, man, um, after all those surgeries and everything and post football, you know, I gained a bunch of weight as some guys do. You know, I was probably 50 pounds overweight. I was like 280 pounds, but it was, wow. yeah, you know, it's, I mean, that's tough on your joints mm -hmm. and ligaments and tendons. And uh, I was about 280 and now I'm down to 235. I'm at yeah. my playing weight and, mm -hmm. uh, and I feel better than I did my all pro year which is, you know, pretty, pretty crazy because I was 26. So, you know, it was like 12 years ago. Um, so, man, yeah, so I've just been, you know, my new mission in life is just to spread the word about, um, you know, CBD and full spectrum oil, which has, uh, it's really led me to a life I've never, I've never known before, man. And, uh, you know, everybody, they think of me at my peak being those Pro Bowl years, but man, I feel so much better than that. <laughs> so. Right. And so that's, I'm just, I'm just spreading, spreading the message and paying it forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. And how's, how have you been handling the pandemic and has, has there been anything um, that you picked up during like any new hobbies or anything like that, maybe more focused towards your business? Yeah, I mean, definitely. You know, um, it's, it's had allowed me because it, it cut off in terms of business, cut off uh, retail. You know, a lot of people aren't going out and shopping. And so we lost retail and we just took our efforts and, and zoned in on, on e-commerce and uh, getting people to the website and, you know, informing them more about what it is and what it isn't. And, um, and then in terms of other things, I started a Seahawks podcast. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, follow, I stay up, I watch the team anyways. And so when I met with one of my friends um, that I went to college with at Radio Row in the Super Bowl. I did one of his podcasts with his guys and he's like, you should really look into, you know, doing a podcast. 
And I was like, I don't know, man. It sounds like a lot of work. As you guys know, it's a <laughs> lot of work. And uh, luckily, I got a great team. So I just got to show up and just talk football. Which, you know, <laughs> you I love football. It. Yeah, I love football. <laughs> I love that job is down, huh? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I know how much goes into the editing and, you know, the cutting of, you know, the clips. So um, doing that and doing a lot of radio, um, talking about the Hawks as well. And so, uh, and then I got two kids, nine and six years old, two boys, you know, and um, been spending a lot of time with them. I didn't realize, I didn't realize how old they got, you know, <laughs> all, all <laughs> in between <clears throat> starting up a business and, and, you know, coaching. Um, right. But I've been incredibly blessed to spend more time with them and, mm -hmm. uh, and be the fourth grade math teacher uh, and kindergarten math teacher. <laughs> that was my best <laughs> subject. So that and the gym teacher, those are the two, those are the two classes about, I teach here. What about them? Are they, uh, are they future linebackers or what? No, the, my youngest <laughs> is for sure. My oldest, and see, that's the thing with football, you gotta have passion, right? You, you know, um, you gotta love this game and, and put everything into it. And if they tell me that they want to, they want to try it and they, you know, they really love it. They have to show me that they love it. Right. As opposed to just telling me they want to try it because I played. Cause you know, they, they come home and say, Hey, my friend said that you used to play football. Like they don't know. <laughs> it was so, it was a couple of years before they were born. Right. So, right, right. but the youngest just naturally, he has, um, he's got instinct. Um, I can see it in all the things, all, all the sports we play, but he's got that, he's got that edge to him that, you know, that aggressive mentality where even I've seen him just get ran over by a couple of kids, you know, playing in the park and he just gets up and goes right back at him. And, you know, that's what, that's what I was blessed with when I was a kid. And so I, you know, I recognize that trait. My oldest, he's really big into, um, you know,